Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from the 2018 Beale Chess Festival. This is a round one game that was played today between Magnus Carlsen playing on the white end, rated 2842, and David Navarro, rated 2741. So let's dive right in and see how this one develops. Opening, Queen's Gambit declined. Variation, Rogozin, one of the more topical lines at the top level. I've included the clocks for each player just to the right so you can get a rough estimate of the amount of time spent on each turn. Time controls are 100 minutes apiece. You gain 30 seconds when you make a move and there's some bonus time at move 40 and 60. 50 minutes and 15 minutes respectively. Both time controls are met in this game. So a quick imbalance is now present, knight for bishop exchange. This is the one piece that sticks out to me now. Unopposed, dark square bishop. Rook c1 on move 8, not yet committing the bishop. White would prefer to recapture on c4 in one swing if allowed. Black allows it. Black captures on c4 now. And then plays c5. I questioned the timing of these moves. I wondered why black is, let's say, being so polite allowing this recapture in one turn. Why not play c5 first? I believe an issue with playing c5 first is that white can saddle black with an isolated d-pawn, and I believe that this is seen more so as a liability than an asset in this environment. And so it is first captures on c4, only then c5. d takes c, knight, d7, and a small decision point for white. You can castle, or you could also consider breaking up the AB structure with C6. This pawn is going to fall, so C6 is an option to damage the queenside structure. White places an emphasis on development. Castles it is. Knight takes C5. And after Knight B5, this is where things now sharpen. I'm once more drawn to the bishop in this case because it is staring off into space there is no white piece for it to capture and if black does not act fast black is going to lose some material the thread here is a3 and after the bishop backs up b4 forking the bishop and knight black understands this and black on move now starts giving direction to white in fact these next three moves throw punches at the white miners a3, excuse me, a6, b5, and now e5. This is an important moment in the game. A big decision for Team White. You don't necessarily have to react to this threat. Carlson does react to this threat, but there is something else to consider, and I imagine this move is what was considered on this move 15. I'd like to draw some attention to this moment in the game. It's a big one. A3 is likely a move that was considered by Carlson, but maybe not played for the following reason. This position that springs about becomes a bit on the simplified side. Just working with major pieces, same colored bishops, black may very well be able to pick up this pawn right now. Could be some technical issues on the back rank, but this is becoming, in short, a bit on the simplified side, and it may be difficult to try and press for the full point. The decision at this moment is on this move 15 to sacrifice the queen. The move played, knight c2, is the queen sacrifice. After rook d8, there is no better move than to capture on b4. This is the idea that White had in mind at this moment right here. Knight c2 is the queen sack. Rook d8, knight takes bishop, rook takes queen, and here we are. The number one thing White has to have in this imbalanced position is coordination. White has just that. White also has a tiny bit more on the development side. All pieces are functioning. Rooks are ideally placed occupying the two only opened files. From here, a5, knight d5, black has to defend the knight. 
From here, knight takes e5, taking advantage of the fact that the queen is overloaded. Had two jobs. So now, material imbalance, what are we looking at? Knight, rook, and pawn versus queen. Getting some more development in, bishop b7, bishop f3. A lot of repositioning in this one, trying to find good squares for pieces for both sides. Rook c8, now that the knight is defended, this is on, this is a threat. Queen takes knight. Knight g4, counterpunch, addresses this threat, and now knight f6 is a threat. This knight to f6, with check, picking up the queen. Queen f8, h4, multipurpose, some square, some air for the king. And one day maybe this pawn can kind of cramp the king's side pawns, h5. So some reposition, the rooks are exchanged, cannot recapture with the queen, knight e7, game over. So the bishop recaptures, a3, this is now the only base point white needs to be uh, careful about. If there's pressure on it, there's some defense, rook on d2. These pieces will find good squares, the white pieces will be able to find good squares. h5, g6. Defending h5. Bishop e2. This pawn is under fire. Black ignores it. Playing knight e5, and then this pawn is picked up next. This is one thing I wondered. I wondered why maybe this isn't, you know, why doesn't black try to hang on to this pawn? It could be difficult to do that. You know, devoting the queen to its defense. I mean, for one, there's the move b4. Black has to be very careful. I mean, there are some possibilities to pick up the bishop. You know, if black tries to go on the offensive, there is knight e7, and then knight takes bishop, and maybe in the end this pawn still falls. It's kind of tricky to hang on to the b pawn. Or if b4, there can be a capture, and then rook d4 hitting it twice. It's tricky to defend. Black gives it up and instead places an emphasis on repositioning the knight. It's a strong piece, probably black's best piece now, the knight on e5. Bishop takes b5, bishop b7, knight c3, and now here comes the black queen. White better be coordinated. Find good squares for pieces, because this queen could be, you know, she could really strike at two unprotected pieces. And at the moment, there's only, there's only a couple. b2 and h4, that's defended first, rook d4. The queen is now starting to slip in, put pressure on the weak point b2. Knight f1, queen b3, rook d2, and knight c4. Another important moment. What do you do here as white? The decision is to not take the knight. If you take the knight, this is it's tough to kind of press in this position. You kind of see a little back and forth like this. I don't know that you could really move forward, let's say, as white in this position if you capture on c4. So instead we have rook d7. This is like this this is the second instance where white is really trying to show, you know, I'm I'm not looking to have this position peter down to a draw. I want to inject some imbalance. I want to keep some imbalance present. We get exactly that with rook d7. Knight takes b2, rook takes bishop, queen takes knight, and now the king position is brought into question. White targets f7. Another in interesting moment, this time an option for black to capture the pawn on a or not. In the game, king f8 is played. If the queen captures this pawn, it's true, this guy becomes passed. But it may, it may be the case that all of these pawns fall to the bishop. Something like this. And yeah, you could see these guys be picked up and white will have four connected pass pawns. It's a tough call. I really don't know how to assess that endgame. Yes, there would be all these pass pawns, but you know how fast can they really move? If they go too far, then the king is maybe a bit vulnerable. Really tough to assess. 
The decision by Navarra at this stage is to play king f8 and now get a couple peace exchanges in. Queen c6 is basically forcing the continuation. Rook takes knight, king takes bishop. This is what happens in the game. Doing something else, trying to, let's say, keep the rook trained on the bishop, would be losing for white because black can really start to coordinate the knight and queen on the weak squares in white's camp. F2 can quickly become a great sensitive point in white's camp, just taking it out a few moves to show. There's even something like knight to e1. The queen and knight are killers. Th mate threat on g2, and if f3, there's double attacks, queen b6 hitting everything. Okay, not a good idea to play rook to a7 in this case. It's rook takes knight, king takes bishop. And where do we stand? Two pawns, a knight and a rook versus a queen. Coordination, still number one for white. Must stay coordinated. Let's see how white tries to manage this. Rook d2, queen a4. I didn't throw a pop quiz your way. Pop quiz. After queen a4, both pawns are hit. One will fall. Which one is more important to hang on to? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. If you said the A pawn, well done. Can't lose that guy. The A5 pawn becomes passed. That's too strong. That would be too strong for Team Black. So White allows this pawn to be captured, the H pawn. Note that this guy is not passed now. White inserts a check. I think this is one of those, you know, you just kind of get a quick move in. Maybe make Black think a little bit. We know in the end where this rook really wants to be. First throw a question to the king. King g8, rook d4. This is where the white rook wants to be. On a secure square, defended by the pawn, and now after the move a3, white maintains coordination. Rook defends a4, everything is glued together. There's no, you know, there's no way to really break down the white side. Now, if you look at the computer evaluation, it's reading at the moment, okay, minus 0.11. You can't look at that and say black has an advantage. This is a position type where it is only white that is playing for two results. There's no great progress for black to be made. The rook cannot be challenged when it's on d4. It patrols this fourth rank, and that means that the king could never cross into white's house and white could always just play moves like g3 king g2 or make knight moves there's no way to break down the white side so how to make progress is the big question how can white try to make progress let's see how this takes shape getting a few more moves in this is an interesting decision playing g5 and then g4 it's true that the g pawn would clamp down on this structure, but uh, they become a bit of a liability as they move forward. Not sure, maybe maybe a better idea is to just keep the queen, you know, just keep making queen moves, keep the king back, keep the structure a bit back. But it moves forward in this game, g5, g4. Meanwhile, the knight is repositioning, and yeah, this pawn is now going to be picked up. Black doesn't try to defend it. I believe maybe one of the ideas is that Black was envisioning that without the H-pawn, maybe there is some possibility for a perpetual. Without the H-pawn around, maybe the queen can subject, it, subject the white king to some checks if it's on the H-file. Can't be sure that that's the exact train of thought. But okay, this H-pawn is picked up in the end. From here, king g1, some checks, it's no perpetual. Knight f4, knight g2, some reorganization. The white rook wants to be, at this moment, on the f4 square. This is an important moment. You could see many players be tempted by the following move. Rook d5. This would not be a good choice to try and pick up the pawn. What would be the issue with that? The issue is that white is now not coordinated. Yes, you just want a pawn, but look at f2. 
Look at the rook. Both are unprotected, and guess where the queen's going to go? D2. And something is going to be picked up. You can't win this as white if you're greedy like this. You have to stay coordinated always. So if I just take it out a, a couple more moves like this, what are you doing? What would white do to defend f2? could only defend with king g1, and there's always this perpetual idea or repetition of position idea. You can't do this. You should not do this as white. Rook f4 is fantastic. Really glues everything together. Everything is protected, and it's just about finding a good spot for the knight next. Let's see what white does. Knight h4, knight f5. And here we go with e4. I'm not quite sure what white would do if the queen stayed trained on the a4 pawn. Be a bit trickier. The knight could try to, let's say, get to the e4 square distract the king away, maybe even the f6 square to pick up the g4 pawn. I could try to converge on g4. In this game, we have queen d3. The One of the moments the queen is not observing a4 allows now this e4 advance. This is a passed pawn after all, and it gets rolling. And there are some tricks involved. The knight and the rook are nearby the king, and there's a passer. So from here, queen d7, e5, the rook is there, just in time to defend a4, queen h7 check, king g1, and after queen g6, what to do here? It's very tempting. This is something I tested out in the game. I wondered, you know, I thought one of the ideas was to play to e3. Playing to e3, converging on this square, would not be a good idea because you really get to see the, the queen's strength in this position. If knight e3 is played here, black can make use of h7, b7, and b1, delivering checks along the rank, the file, the diagonal, getting at the king from all angles. So you could start like this, king g2, queen b7, King h2, queen h7, there isn't an h-pawn around, these checks are there. And if, you're to, if white is to avoid these perpetual checks, it would have to be with something like knight f1. But then after queen e1, this pawn will fall. So, no knight e3 in this position. Knight d6. One of the ideas is to have this check in mind, and also observe that b7 square. One of the squares the queen would like to make use of for these uh, perpetual checks. So there's no perpetual at this point. In the game, queen e6 is played, and there's just one more variation to really highlight before we see the remaining moves. Queen b1. If queen b1 is played, king h2, queen h7, I came across an interesting line here. After queen d7, it may be very tempting to go for the following variation, playing as white, rook f5, king g6, rook f6, if the king steps up, the rook steps up, and the queen is lost, white will go on to win the king and pawn endgame. If the king goes here, there's this mating idea with knight f7, king h5, rook h6 for checkmate, right? If knight f7 in this position, the queen has to take out the knight, Otherwise, that's game over. Watch how easily white can slip up in this position. How would black, one more pop quiz, how would black defend in this position after knight to f7? How would black defend against rook h6 mate? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, black could defend by way of queen d5 and then queen h1, giving up the queen because in the end, this would be stalemate. Anyhow, we didn't go down that path, just an interesting variation I found. And what did we have? We had queen e6, and from here, the queen's going to be lost. After rook f5 check, if the king backs up, rook f6, and the queen has to give herself up for just a rook. So black at least takes out two pieces now. 
The Rook and the Knight are captured, but in the end, White is up two extra pawns and is winning this King and Pawn endgame. With f4, takes, King f2, King takes pawn, King f3, and White, after King to e3, is winning. Black resigns at this point. If it did carry out, Black is going to be one move shy of being able to shoulder off the White King, and we know what happens from here. White gets a queen and delivers mate. But this is as far as it went. Move 64, king to e3, and Navarra resigns. If you're interested in the tail of the tape on this one, well, even if you're not, here it is. You could have a look at the inaccuracies, mistakes, and blunders for each side. Two inaccuracies, one mistake, zero blunders for Carlson, 15 average centipon loss. Five inaccuracies, one mistake, one blunder, 31 average centipon loss for Navarra. Pretty even game throughout. And, well, at a certain point, there's this little slip up. These uh, decisions to give up the H pawn, I'm not so sure about that. And the, the queen, queen D3 move, I believe, is where it really, you know, in that end game, giving up, well, allowing the E4, E5 idea. Once that passer got within just a few steps of promoting, there were just too many threats for Team Black to parry. Anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this game in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.